Good morning, hello everybody. Sorry I came to this conference with a bad cold. I'm getting better, but I still need a sip of water. Oh, I cough from time to time, so sorry for any disruptions in my regular talk. Anyway, I've been teaching world regional geography at UW Ashkash for over 30 years, and I have used a number of books in that class. It used to be the most popular class for the so-called non-Western culture requirement for general education. We used to have about 1,700 students a year out of 2,500 admitted each year, so about two-thirds of them took that class. And over the, those 30 years, I know, have noticed two trends in this area. Number one, the number of textbooks has been increasing. At the same time, the length of the textbook has been decreasing which means students don't like to read too much. And many publishers responded to that kind of a wish and the students part by producing two versions of the same book. The shorter version, which sometimes is called Essentials of World Regional Geography Fundamentals, and most instructors, to my knowledge, use shorter versions of those books. When I began teaching, that class in 1987, there were two, three, maybe four books on the market. The best known book was the Blee, uh, World Regional Geography, World Regions. I began using these two books, English and Jackson. In those days, maps in those books were either in one or two color and that was progress at that time. But today, we have at least eight books on the market, and I've used most of them, not all of them, but five or six of them. You have the name of the principal author on top of each cover page, and three names, I think, are in italics. That means there are newer versions of that book. I have not had access to them yet. And all of them look very colorful. And I would like to give you some statistics about maps and other things in those textbooks. First of all, here you have information on how many pages those books have. So notice they vary from 350 to almost 600 pages. So still pretty substantial. And when it comes to number of maps in those books, you can see again from 175 to almost 250. Of course, maps vary in size. Some are pretty small, occupy less than a quarter of the page. Others occupy two pages. So when it comes to the amount of space used to show maps, notice from about 17% to 31%. So on the average, about 20, 25% of the space in each book is devoted to cartography. Now, when it comes to those maps, we divide them, of course, into reference and thematic maps. And here I have information how many reference and thematic books each textbook has. So as again, you can see, numbers vary significantly. And well, you can see for yourself, Pulsifer has more maps than other books. Now, when it comes to the thematic maps, again, we divide them into qualitative and quantitative. And here again, the number of both types varies significantly. But in most cases, we have 
a pretty, you know, well-balanced of both types of maps. So a typical World Regional Geography textbook, that means those eight books that I analyzed, is, has 469 pages, 200 maps, so many reference types, so many thematic maps, and together 22% of the map space. Now, almost every textbook will have the same type of maps. Everyone has physical map of a particular region. So here I'm showing the map of Europe, showing terrain configuration in each of those textbooks. Some maps you know, show only the specific study area, like in this case Europe. Other maps show the whole area and the same technology or technique has been used to show landform configuration, elevation above sea level. One of those textbooks uses the natural world raster image. Anybody knows which book would be in that group? Hubs, the second one on top. That's the natural earth. This is, oops, this is the one. And most of those maps would be no, pretty large, occupying one page. Every book has maps showing population distribution. Here are maps of the same region, Europe, showing population density, population distribution. Most of them are either corporate maps or the symmetric maps. One textbook uses that density map. And likewise, some textbooks show just Europe or any other region. Other maps show the whole area shown on the map in, you know, in proper colors. Almost every textbook has climate maps. Here we have more differences when it comes to how climate is shown. Usually they show types of climate. Some maps show additional information like climograms, but most maps would show just different you know, climatic regions. Another common map that is shown in almost every book is the African slave trade. So I just took samples and well, we have two, four, six, seven. One textbook did not show a map, but you can see different ways to show more or less the same phenomenon. But in almost every case, these maps are, you know, use flow, kind of a chart to show number of slaves brought to the Americas or the Middle East and so on. When it comes to other types of maps, different techniques have been used. These three maps of Africa show the distribution of mineral resources. You can see in one map, symbols, quite large symbols are used. In other map, we have aerial symbols that show this or that particular you know, mineral. And in still another map, we have just you no know, chemical, I mean, not chemical, but symbolic uh, symbols, letters used what minerals are shown. So the quality varies, and some are more detailed than others. However, some textbooks have some big errors, not done on purpose. For example, these two maps come from the same textbooks. I will not name those textbooks, but one map shows Sub-Saharan Africa, the other South Asia. And the remaining eras are shown in gray, yet notice Europe and Russia are shown that could be part of Sub-Saharan Africa. I guess cartographers didn't have enough time to cover those mistakes. Likewise, in South Asia, you see parts of Russia, Mongolia, and the Arabian Peninsula. Again, somebody forgot to cover those areas. So such things do happen in many textbooks. Here we have two maps, and the first map showing Fertility in India, in my opinion, 
the choice of colors is not very good. Could be a bit better. And the map of Iran supposed to show something, but the legend is completely blackened. So it's, you can't read it, and that's how it looks in the textbook. So again, somebody was rushing, and they didn't have enough time to notice that, that mistake. There are some design errors and some content errors. The first part shows map of China and map of the Middle East, and proportional symbols are used to show income per capita. You should not use proportional symbols to show relative data. You should use them to show absolute data. So that can be easily corrected, but it was done that way. The map of China shows pie charts, again, income per capita shown on pie charts between rural and urban population. That's the best way to show this type of information. And the map of Europe has some content errors. This map shows religions in Europe. And if you look at Lithuania, for example, it's predominantly Catholic, yet it is shown as Protestant. On the other hand, the Kaliningrad area, which is part of Russia, but between Poland and Lithuania, is really Eastern Orthodox, yet it is shown as uh, Catholic. On the other hand, Switzerland is shown as completely Catholic country, which is not the case. So there were some errors of that type too. These two maps come from the same textbook, and they are supposed to show Central Asian region. Some books identified that region after the collapse of the Soviet Union, and both maps look pretty nice, but somehow the other map doesn't show Afghanistan. So it should show everything or something like that. Here I have some maps that show something, but notice the three maps on one page show this in the same color United States and Canada. They really don't show too much. There are maps of the world that are more detailed, yet they are barely visible. So I would reverse the things, but that's how it was done. These two maps show the same thing for two different years. Percent of population, I think that's Hispanic, but anyway, two different scales were used for corporate plate map, I mean two different class intervals were used for corporate plate maps, and they really do not show too much difference. There is some difference, Nevada looks different in the other map, Wisconsin, and I think Vermont or New Hampshire, Hampshire, but you know, they could use the same class intervals for both maps. This map showing vulnerability to climate change in Africa, kind of a strange that uh, it changes along the political boundaries. It's rather not the correct way. <laughs> climate doesn't change like that. But that, I think that map was taken from another source, so I would not blame the author for something like that. Here you can see maps showing the four basic minority groups in the United States by county. And again, each map has its own class intervals. And if you look at that map, you may come to the conclusion that Native Americans comprise the largest group because there are everywhere in the western part of the country. In reality, we know that's not the case. Here is another textbook with the same four maps, and yet things look a little bit different. Now, when we look at both these two maps, then we see it really depends how you show things. Well, first of all, the first map shows percent of population, that's the other map in blue shows total number of people, which you should not show on corporate maps absolute values either. So these are the two types of errors. Here we have two maps of the former Soviet Union in two different projections. And one, of course, shows a climatic map, and one shows landform configuration. I like, you know, when you, when you show 
the certain region, you use the same projection for all the maps. So there are eight books, and there are all of them pretty nice, you know, with some issues here and there. Well, I decided to write my own book, and the first prelim preliminary version just came a month ago or so, and I'm using it in my class. So that book, um, uh, two colleagues helped me to complete it. Here is some statistics about that book. So the difference is that that new World Regional Geography books has more maps and many more thematic maps. And they occupy more or less the same amount of space, about a quarter of book space. And I'm just going to show you some examples of the maps that will be in that book, or are in that book. Again, I use the natural earth to show landform configuration for every region. I used combination of coroplet and proportional symbol map to show population distribution in each region. And this was the most time consuming map to make. I make the map for the whole world and then for each region. I think I spent about six months to collect the data at the subnational level for every country to have this type of a map. Then I used a raster image for world climate data to show precipitation and temperature with climograms for each region. I made my own map showing the transatlantic slave trade, showing the amount of slaves shipped from Africa and where they went. Also, the amount of slaves shipped in different decades. This book also will have some maps that you may not see in other maps, I mean, textbooks, for example. Oops, my time is up, so these two maps show natural hazards, and this map shows levels of urbanization. Well, I have to finish at this time, so any questions, I would be happy to answer. I have a few more maps that I want to show you. This map shows labor camps in the former Soviet Union that Stalin generated. You will not see maps like this type in most books. It took me some time to collect information on that. This one shows, for example, population change in Russia or in the former Soviet Union after the collapse of communism, areas in green are gaining population, areas in pink are losing population. So, and I even made a bunch of maps on Oceania showing different things. This map shows, see sometimes I don't even remember what I made because it's such a small text I can read it. I have maps like story of Israel and the Middle East process, or map showing Aboriginal population and the Maoris people in Australia and New Zealand, respectively. So this book has lots of maps, thematic maps, mainly quantitative maps. Well, thank you very much. <laughs>